Hey guys, so final video for my couple days off. Don't worry, you'll be seeing me soon. Um, but for this video, I just wanted to do uh, the response to Ariel Bissett's um, tag from her four-part mini-series about reading in school. There are three sections of questions, elementary school questions, high school questions, and the beyond. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start with the elementary questions, which are, have them written down, um, what teaching techniques should be used to engage young readers? Should it be the school's job to instill a love of reading in children? And then the final question, what was your favorite elementary school read? To the first question, I think that um, I really liked what they used for me in elementary school, which was the accelerated reading program. Um, basically, each book was given a points value, and you took a little test, and you were given, um, you know, a most either all of the points or a couple of the points based on how many questions you got uh, right. And at the end of the year there was a pizza party thrown with, for either the student or the class that had the highest AR accelerated reading score. And I really liked that. I think that the, the whole thing behind it that's necessary of course is um, it, the teachers have to be really diligent about following through. It's not something that you can lose your, lose your grip on. Um, I'm also kind of a fan of what Ariel talked about, about how there should be maybe like a book that's read a month and at the end of the month you have a party with snacks. I think that that would really help as well. Um, as far as is it the school's job to instill a love of reading, I really feel like it takes a village. Um, as far as instilling a love of reading, I was really fortunate. My whole family is uh, passionate about reading. My mom's a librarian, so and my dad, like, we were always reading. We were always being read to at my house. I don't remember a time when I couldn't read. So for me, picking up a book and reading was never a problem. And then I also had some really great teachers in elementary school that, in, that further instilled that love of reading. But I really feel like it takes not just the teachers, but it takes the parents, um, it takes your peers. So I think in that respect, it, I guess that in order to make, make reading um, fun for everybody so that one person can be inspired, it does take the school to be responsible because then, you know, once all, the, all of the students are excited about reading, then it won't be such a big deal to have just one person excited about reading. And I'm not really sure how much since that made. It's late at night. I have to get to bed soon. Moving on. Favorite elementary school read? Hmm. I read a lot in elementary school. I did a lot of the series. Um, the Chronicles of Narnia I've talked about ad infinitum, so I don't want to re lean on those. Um, I also read uh, the Ramona Quimby books, and I read Pippi Longstocking. Um, I, I guess the book that stands out the most besides to me, besides the Chronicles of Narnia, is Where the Red Fern Grows. Um, and I will write down somewhere, you know, who wrote that, because I can't remember right now, but oh my gosh. Um, we had actually a supply teacher for a few weeks when I was in third grade, and uh, she read that book to us, and it was just, she was crying, and we were crying, and it, it's just, it's always really stood out to me in, in, the, in all of the reading that, I've, that I did and that I've done. Um, so I would have to say my favorite elementary school read would be Where the Red Fern Grows. So, on to the high school questions. Um, the first one is, uh, should young adult books be included in the curriculum, and which young adult books? Um, I absolutely think so. I feel like they're written for a target audience. They're written for high schoolers, for the most part. I would say, I would actually say that young adult books are meant for mostly, I would say, 6th to 10th graders. I feel like that would be the the key target audience um, or who they're written about um, and then with a couple of exceptions moving up into senior years of high school um, and but I absolutely think that in, in your ninth or tenth grade year of high school you should be reading young adult books especially if they are set in historical time periods because that way it makes that particular period more personal to you and um, and as far as which young adult books, I would say there's a book about the uh, Dust Bowl called Into the Dust 
which again can't recall the name of right now I will post it down in the comments um, and I think that that's a great example of a young adult novel that uh, deals with it actually deals with some really sad themes and it also has uh, it's set in a small town in Oklahoma in the 30s and this young this girl's mother dies during childbirth and it's just a really bleak and sad time for her because the you know it, the, it's the depression and there's dust everywhere so and and but she overcomes it and I think that it has a really happy ending so I feel like it touches on a lot of things that young adults could relate to so I absolutely feel like young adult books should be included in the curriculum um, and then the next question is should uh, should books be read from a wide variety of nationalities and that I would say absolutely it should be um, when I was in high school in ninth and tenth grade in ninth grade we read Romeo and Juliet which I think is a mistake I don't think that you should start reading Shakespeare until 11th or 12th grade um, in ninth grade I know I read On the Road by Jack Kerouac which I couldn't follow I didn't understand the value of it very confused by it um, and 10th grade lit was when we read 10th grade was devoted to American lit um, and I just that was when we read Catcher in the Rye which I really didn't like um, we read The Crucible by Arthur Miller which again not a huge fan The Scarlet Letter the most boring book in the world and so I feel I feel split by this question because I absolutely think that um, that in high school you should be reading uh, books from other from people of other nationalities um, and I think that especially in ninth and tenth grade I feel like that's really important um, tenth grade if like me you went to a high school where tenth grade was devoted to American literature I think that there are other books that you could choose A Tree Grows in Brooklyn is a great novel um, a, a coming of age novel I read it on my own in eighth grade and I loved it. I loved Fanny. I thought that it talked about a really great time period in American history. It's set in New York. I just, I don't understand why that book wasn't on the curriculum. Um, and it was an honors class, but even so, I feel like just because it's an honors class doesn't mean that you have to read, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to read above your grade level, but I think that it does mean that you can really delve into the discussion of a book more. So um, I really, to, to sort of wrap up that one question, yes, I feel like uh, other uh, authors of other nationalities should be read, and, um, but I also think that schools need to reevaluate their reading list of authors, uh, U.S. And, and British authors that they choose from if they're going to teach those classes. And so the final question in the high school category is, what was your least favorite high school read? And I would have to say that is The Catcher in the Rye. I did not like Holden Caulfield. I didn't like the story. I didn't relate to it. Other people wax poetic about this book, and I don't understand why. I find Holden Caulfield to be extremely annoying, um, not very sympathetic, not a very sympathetic character. He goes to a boarding school, which I don't get. And who can relate to that? What 16-year-old can relate to Holden Caulfield? I don't know of one, so that would be my least favorite high school read. And now I move on to the beyond high school section. There are three sections of questions. First, should there be an emphasis on creative writing in uh, post-high uh, post school? And uh, should does the reading in school affect my reading now? And which book did I read last year that should be read in high school? Um, so I graduated from college in 2011. So this is kind of a nostalgic thing for me. Um, should Do I think that there should be an emphasis on creative writing? Maybe in your, uh, in your freshman and sophomore English classes, but um, but unless that, but as an English major, I would have to say that unless you study creative writing, which I did, I took a short, uh, short fiction class, uh, the short story class. Um, I don't necessarily think that there should be an emphasis on creative writing. If you are stuttering, if you are stuttering, if you are studying um, literary genre, or if you are studying topics in a particular it, topics in American literature, or something like that, 
Um, no, not necessarily. That's when you really focus on essay writing. But your freshman and sophomore, your 1101, your 1102, that should be when you really fo when you are able to write in different formats, not just essay, but creative writing and creative nonfiction writing and all different kinds of things that all different kinds of writing formats that you should focus on as you get into your upper level English classes. If you take them, then no, not necessarily. Um, does the reading that I did in college affect my reading now? Um, yeah, no, not so much. Um, I feel like I'm still pretty much reading the same things that I was reading before. Um, I would say that uh, I think it's it might it might have opened me up to different authors that I'm interested in, but um, I feel like but I feel like the books that I read for my classes in college were meant for discussion, and they are in those books I wouldn't necessarily want to read on my own. Um, I feel that way uh, just to sort of go back a couple steps. I feel that way about the Iliad. The Iliad is an extremely exciting story. I read it in high school, but I wouldn't want necessarily want to go off and read the Iliad on my own. Um, I feel like uh, I read Dante's Inferno in high school, and it was an extremely interesting book to read in discussion, but I wouldn't necessarily want to read it on my own. So. Um, Bas basically my point is the books that I read on my own are sort of the topics that I have always read on my own but I, I guess I would say that the way that the reading I did in college affected me now is that um, I know what books I would want to, dis to read for discussion and so the final question is uh, what book did I read last year that should be read in high school um, <laughs> I don't really read a lot of uh, young adult um, I'm trying to think. I have to stare at my bookshelf. Um, I can't say right now. I I feel like um, some contemporary lit probably should be involved. I, I read, okay, so I have a, a favorite author of mine is Susanna Kearsley. She writes um, historical uh, romance kind of novels, um, and there was one that she wrote called um, Shadowy Horses, and it takes place in Scotland, um, and it talks about the Ninth Roman Legion, and her books are kind of really intriguing because they're romance, but they also have a little bit of science fiction, but they also have a little bit of history. So I think that it would be really interesting to um, maybe maybe study her writing style and also to study her uh, how correct she was with her her facts. Um, so yeah, so that is the uh, the reading in school book tag that was created by Ariel Bassett and I hope that you enjoy it and that I wasn't too convoluted in my answers and I will see you guys next Monday. Bye!